My name is John Carbone. I'm 25, and I uh, I've worked for Nassau County Parks for like six years now in two different spots. And I literally just started a second job uh, as a medical courier, going around Brooklyn and Manhattan. Okay, so parks that was when I started to get into music. That was about like six years ago, and. So my dad was a county man for 35 years, so he was like, why don't you work at Lakeside Theater? Um, uh, because they do sound and shit, and you can learn about that. And uh, so I did, and I worked out for three years. Then I moved into the mail room because I started gigging more, and that's when music started getting more serious, so I needed my nights and weekends. The mail gig is, is not really that difficult. I drive around from park to park, um, and I deliver inter-office mail. It's pretty sweet job. I actually it's been very helpful to work on music and stuff and like singing in the car and practicing and going over demos and stuff and no one really bothers me too much for the most part. Um, so that's that job. So did you tell them how we met? Yeah. Well, uh, yeah. <laughs> I forgot to said when like Gina brought me over here because that was really the first time we met. You didn't tell them about the Frightener show? No. The Frightener show was the first time we met. It was a friend's band called the Frighteners in their like practice space, which is a basement. And uh, boom! I was really drunk, very drunk. She was visiting uh, home from Canada because she went to school at McGill. She's very smart. And uh, <laughs> and um, yeah, we just started talking. I don't really remember much. Him for being a Nassau County man. Yeah, she did. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, so it's like drawn to her the whole night. I just, I don't remember a lot, but I remember wanting to be there all the time, like to, just talking to her. John is a, <laughs> he's one of the nicest people that I've ever met. He's really generous um, and sweet and very funny. He makes me laugh a lot. Um, and he's got a lot of confidence, definitely, which is attractive. <laughs> and um, yeah, he's just really nice, cares a lot about his friends and his family and the people who are important to him. And he's also very determined and driven. So if he wants to do something, that's what he's going to do. And he won't stop until he reaches his goal. So. <laughs> Looking back on my life, it's it's interesting because I can pick out particular moments like I remember when I sat behind a drum set. I don't know if it was the first time, but it was the first time I remember. And I sat down behind it and I just banged on it. And it like, it sounded like shit, of course, but I, I will never forget as long as I live that moment of just like this, there's something about this that makes sense. It's just like speaking to me right now. And then another time <clears throat> in the Boy Scouts, near the Cub Scouts rather, you know, all the den mothers were around and like it was in a cafeteria of a school and they had a piano. And I was the same thing, just bashing on the piano. And my mom was telling me, oh, John, stop, you're making a racket or whatever, because I was making a racket. But I remember thinking at the time, like, this sounds amazing. I can play piano, it sounds good. Uh, so, like, there, there were signifiers early on. And then uh, I was dating a girl, and that relationship was not exactly healthy. But she had a friend who made music, who was Derek Smith. And when I was dating her, we always said like, yeah, we should jam sometime, but I wasn't really doing anything with music then because, you know, the relationship was kind of everything. And, uh, but uh, after I got out of that, I picked up a three string guitar, 
not made to be three strings. It had three strings, and I, I started just kind of like plucking at it and made some kind of tuning that made sense to me, even though I didn't know I was playing. And then I started writing songs, and it like got me through that. So that was like the real thing. I started putting songs together, and uh, then I finally like put them out like on a MySpace page. Eric yeah. heard that, really liked it, and was like, let's I finally do it. Let's get together and jam. And then we started jamming together. And uh, that went through a whole bunch of different stages. We were a three-piece. The bassist left. Me and Derek rocked it as a duo for a while. Um, and then now it's you know it's just been changing over the years for a lot. So, but that's what initially brought me to Derek. And Moontooth, uh, Rice brought me to Moontooth because I met Nick um, and the band he was in at the time, Exemption, uh, through Rice. We played a show at Exemption, and also Derek knew them. And Derek was like kind of my introduction to the like that this whole like kind of local community like scene whatever you want to call it um so yeah exemption was playing for a while nick started playing in rice guitar and um and then exemption broke up and then you know me and nick were kind of close at that point and i loved exemption i loved the music that nick and ray were making already and nick and ray were still going to do it um not exemption but like continue writing music and they needed a singer so i was just like i can do this you know what i mean like this is i i know i can do it so performing it's more or like at a show it's more of like a job situation so it's whereas um it's a lot of people you know you're just going to enjoy the music or a drink or something but when he's at a show it's about like meeting people and um networking and seeing it, like respecting the other musicians that play so um i guess in that way it's different from john at home when he can just kind of He's not working, you know, he can just relax then. Alright. It's my girlfriend. That's another thing about all this, like the juggling things, is like fitting a relationship into it is really difficult. And I'm lucky that like my girlfriend's tolerant of it because it's like it's not easy. You go away on tour and shit and like a lot of the weekends are shows and stuff so she's really cool you know it's it's it can be very hectic and stressful and it's gotten to the point where like I you know I appreciate days that I can kind of come home and just fucking make some pasta and chill out and watch something or sit down and just like relax or read something um cause most of the time it's just like oh okay get home gotta do this you know you work the 9 to 5 and then you do whatever else you have to do that day you go to practice you're playing a show or you're doing this or doing that or you're trying to save up or to like go on tour and like going broke going on tour or something not to complain it's it's a lot to balance i think it's difficult to play a lot of shows during the week and especially difficult to have like a full-time job on top of that i mean he has so much energy like way more than i do i couldn't imagine doing what he does um I think it, in the beginning, like, for our relationship, it was kind of difficult because you can't, like, well, it's definitely not, like, a traditional relationship, you know, you can't expect to see the person as much, you know, because they go away on tours, sometimes, like, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, the whole weekend, or for, like, a week or two at a time, and the plan is for it to be, you know, longer than that in the future, um, but I think he does a pretty good job so far balancing it's a lot to handle so I'm going to be playing music the rest of my life playing music I'll put that as the primary thing but I want to do a lot of other things like I have other friends that we've talked about filming sketches with like I want to basically I want to make my living off of being creative and doing the shit that I want to do and it's completely selfish and I think that's what everybody should do I think people should just do what the fuck they want to do with their lives and I don't want any day job distraction none of that bullshit I want to I want to make music I want to make whatever other kind of art I want to make I want to have a farm and I want to have some kids on a farm and like and like yeah which so that's what I'm going to do
as positive thinking.